Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Clockwork Kitchen. I'm Nicole, and today we're gonna to talk about how to tell if your food has gone bad. This is a two-part series. Today we're gonna to focus on fruits and vegetables, and next week we're gonna talk about meat and dairy. I will link that up above and in the description down below when that comes out. How long your food lasts can really vary. I'm gonna to be totally upfront with you that there are no hard and fast rules. I'm not gonna tell you that you can only keep meat for five days exactly, or this particular vegetable for seven days exactly, and then you just have to throw it out. How long your food lasts really does depend on how fresh it was when you first bought it, how it's been prepared, and how it's been stored. And I am planning on doing a video at some point on how to store your food properly, so stay tuned for that one. And as many of you have maybe heard Heard expiration dates are kind of bogus, at least for the most part. There's a lot of information out there about why that is, so I'm not gonna get into that today, but maybe a topic for a later day. Instead of some random number that I've plucked from the sky, I'm gonna teach you how to assess your food and figure out whether it's gone bad. And in the process, this will also hopefully help you waste less food, which is really important as well. The Department of Agriculture did a study that shows that Americans throw away about a pound of food every single day, which is insane. So the more that we can know whether or not our food has gone bad, whether we should really throw it away, or whether we can actually still eat it is really important. Your best tools for figuring out whether or not something has gone bad are actually your senses. You're primarily gonna rely on smell, touch, taste, and sight. Not really sound though. So keep these senses in mind as we go through the video today and for next week as well. As I said, today we're gonna to focus on fruits and vegetables. These are perishable items that you're storing in your fridge. Let's get started. The first group we're gonna talk about are soft fruits and vegetables. These are things like leafy greens, berries, avocados, green onions, tomatoes even, things that tend to disintegrate as they age. My general rule is I usually keep these around for about a week or so, but this can really vary on a case by case vegetable by vegetable basis. You don't have to be quite so diligent with fruits and vegetables as you do with meat and dairy because it just doesn't have the same kind of risks if you tend to kind of push the envelope a little bit. Your best indicator to tell if these fruits or vegetables have gone bad is sight. You're gonna to start to see either little bits of fuzzy mold or little parts going brown or things getting maybe a little bit slimy or a little discolored. Now, if you're dealing with something that has just gone a little bit bad, you can usually just pick out the bad parts and still continue eating that. So for example, I have these leafy greens here that I've had for about a week. And for the most part, they're still doing okay. So what you wanna do is you wanna open them up and take a look. And as you look through it, most of them look pretty good. They're pretty sturdy, nice and crisp still. I can tear them really nicely and they don't disintegrate. But there are a couple pieces in there that are starting to get really discolored and kind of brown looking. This piece is really sort of disintegrating. Some of it even comes off in my hands, which is not great. If you dig a little deeper, you can also see that it's starting to develop a sort of brown liquid here, and it has the same little liquid on the lid. And you can see that there are even more that are disintegrated down at the bottom. You can also give leafy greens a little smell. You can actually tell that they smell a little bit off, a little bit funky, like they're starting to go bad. So this is all indicating to me that this is starting to go and I need to eat this soon, but it doesn't mean that it's all bad. So what you wanna do is you wanna just pick these pieces that are not very good out and you can still wash and use the rest. The same thing can be said for other greens like kale or arugula or spinach. You can also do this with herbs. If they get a little discolored, you just pick off the brown or you know black looking parts and use the rest of it. Another example is green onions. These are maybe a little over a week old. You can see that most of these green onions look pretty good, although this is a little bit limp, but it still feels pretty sturdy. This one, however, has a piece that really is kind of slimy and wet, and you don't wanna use that. So all you have to do is take it and peel off that part, and you can use the rest of it for whatever it is that you'd like to make. 
I don't have any berries right now because we're still kind of at the beginning of spring, so it's not berry season, but those will often grow a kind of fuzzy mold on them. And as long as the whole thing isn't covered in mold, then you can pick out the pieces that look a little off and clean and eat the rest. And you can do this with all sorts of fruits and vegetables from tomatoes, just slice off the parts that look a little bit dark, or even avocados. If you've left that half in the fridge for a little while, the outside might have kind of a grayish, darkish hue you can slice that off and as long as the avocado underneath is still bright and green, you can absolutely use that. These discolorations and disintegrations are a sign that your food is starting to go bad though, so you do want to think of that as an indication that you should be using that food pretty soon. Another great indicator is smell. It's not going to apply across the board, but for certain things like tomatoes or lemons or limes or leafy greens, you can smell those and you can tell that it smells a little bit off and then maybe you either need to not use it depending on how bad it smells or you should use it probably that day. If eating these fruits and vegetables that have started to go a little bit bad makes you squeamish, or if you know that you're not able to use them right away, then a trick that you can do is you can puree them, and then if you know that you can't get to them, you can freeze them after that. So for example, with your leafy greens, you can easily make pesto. There's all different kinds of pestos you can make, not just from basil, but also from kale and arugula and spinach and Honestly, almost anything can be made into a pesto. I'm a big believer in that. If you have some fruit that you're not sure if you can use in time, you could puree that into a kind of berry sauce of some sort, and then you could freeze that and use that later on yogurt or with your pancakes or on all kinds of breakfasts or desserts or anything in between. And a fun fact is that even certain foods are marketed this way. Farmers markets in the middle of the summer will often sell tomatoes that they call seconds. These tomatoes are not of the highest quality. They tend to be a little bit bruised, maybe a little bit discolored in places. And so farmers will sell these to you at a discounted price. And these are not meant to be sliced up and put onto your salad. You're meant to take these and turn them into tomato sauce. So if you are nervous about using any of these fruits and vegetables, you can always cook them, which will kind of cook off anything that might be starting to go bad on there. Or you can turn them into sauces. And especially if you add citrus, that's gonna help with the long longevity of that sauce. And of course, these are so much easier to freeze than like throwing lettuce straight into your freezer, for example. I am going to include a bunch of recipes in the description down below to kind of help you get started with some ideas. Now, of course, all of this only applies if things have started to go a little bit bad. If almost everything is really off, for example, if your salad literally has like brown water in it, or if your entire berry container is just covered in fuzzy mold, or if just everything looks mostly disintegrated, then it's probably all gone bad and you unfortunately just need to throw that away. Our next category is hard fruits and vegetables. So this includes things like carrots, apples, potatoes, peppers, normal onions, squashes, ginger, all sorts of things. I really don't have a great general rule for this one. These really, really vary depending on even the kind of vegetable or fruit that we're talking about. For example, I've kept carrots in the fridge for upwards of two months, but Bell peppers, for example, tend to go bad a little bit sooner, so I use those within one month. So you're really gonna have to rely on those senses to know whether or not that food might have gone bad. Another question you wanna be asking yourself is how close is the fruit or vegetable to its original form? So as I mentioned, I kept carrots in the fridge for two months, but those were whole carrots that were unpeeled, uncut. Those are gonna last way longer than per se if you buy baby carrots, which are cut and peeled. Those are gonna go bad a lot faster. Or if you chopped up a bell pepper, for example, to prep for your meals, that's probably only going to last about seven to 10 days maybe, rather than a whole bell pepper that'll last you a lot longer. The reason for this is that when you cut things up, you create a lot more surface area that is now exposed to the elements, which just means that it could go bad faster. And as a result, you've also removed that protective layer from that fruit or vegetable. Your best indicator for these hard fruits and vegetables is going to be sight and touch. And these two things do go hand in hand, no pun intended. You want your fruit or vegetable to be nice and firm and very vibrantly colored. If it's discolored or if it's squishy or if it looks shriveled in any way, it's probably starting to go bad or has completely gone bad. But just because you see this does not mean that you need to throw it away immediately. So let's take this potato for example. 
From the outside, it looks a little bit green in certain areas. It has a couple of these nubs growing out or starting to grow out, which potatoes will do. It's starting to feel a little bit soft to the touch. I'm not feeling as much resistance as I used to when I press against it with my thumb. But that doesn't mean that this needs to be thrown away. A lot of times things can be a little bit bruised or off on the outside, but the inside is still totally usable. So the next step is to cut this potato in half and take a look and feel at the inside. So when I cut inside, you can see that green tinge that was showing up on the outside, but it's not extending to the inside. The inside is still nice and golden. When I press against it, it's still firm. It doesn't look discolored or grayish at all. And so therefore this is totally fine to use. I'll maybe cut off this part of the skin just to be on the safe side, or I could even peel the whole thing. Another example is this bell pepper. I used the other half of it maybe about a week or so ago, but taking a look at it, I can touch it and I can see that nothing feels squishy. Everything feels really, really sturdy. I'm not seeing any kind of discoloration at all. It all looks still really nice and bright and vibrant. And the inside also doesn't look like there's any sort of discoloration. So this is totally fine to keep and use for a future recipe, but I should probably use it within the next few days. Now there are some cases where maybe the fruit and vegetable has gone a little bad and it's just better to cook it rather than to eat it raw. So for example, if your carrots have gone a little bit droopy, these are still fine to chop up, but maybe you don't wanna shred that on top of the salad. You probably wanna saute that up and throw that into a cooked dish of some kind. Another example is apples. These can get a bit bruised on the outside and sometimes if you left them for too long, the inside can taste a little bit mealy and just not have a great texture and the inside will look a little bit darker than a fresh crisp apple. You just wanna chop these up and turn those into applesauce. Another example is this nub of ginger. You can see right away that it looks really shriveled. It feels pretty squishy to the touch, especially if you think about how hard normal ginger is. So this is definitely on its last leg or maybe even has gone completely bad. But your next step is going to be to cut it. So I'm gonna cut off little bits of the side and take a look inside. And you can see that while it's soft here, the inside right here is still pretty firm actually. It's very crisp if I dig into it with my nail. So I think that this is still totally good to use. I am gonna make sure that I cut off a good bit of the skin. Normally I would just use a spoon to scrape off the skin, but in this case, I wanna make sure that I get a good bit off. And you can see that the inside is still maybe a little bit bendy, not quite as crisp as it normally would be, but I'm getting some nice resistance still, as I said, from my fingernail. So at least I'm okay using this. I'm gonna make sure to throw this into some kind of stir fry or other dish rather than eating it raw, for example, putting it into a smoothie. Now, all of these guidelines apply to raw fruits and vegetables. So you might be asking, what if I've already cooked my vegetables? What do I do then? My general rule is that I try to eat any kind of cooked food within one week. Now, of course, with meat and fish, which I'll get into next week, you might wanna eat that a little bit sooner. And vegetables, you can sometimes push up to 10 days or so. Your best indicator in this case is going to be taste. And I promise, if you take a little taste of something that you're feeling a little dubious about, you're gonna be okay it won't kill you. So for example, I have this Tupperware of cooked broccoli that I cooked up for my last video on what to make when you're stuck at home. I'll link that up above and down below if you haven't seen that already. This broccoli was blanched, so it is cooked. And my next step is going to be to taste it. So I made that about a week ago and um, that, that tastes pretty off actually, unfortunately. I thought this was gonna last a little bit longer. That tastes pretty rough. And another indicator is when I took off the lid, I could immediately smell something. I could immediately smell that this smell is kind of odorous. I know smell is gonna take some time to kind of learn and develop that instinct for, but you know, if you're not sure, you can always smell things right when you cook them or right when you prepare them and then you know, smell them a week down the line and you can kind of tell how it evolves over time. And at least eventually, I believe that you'll develop a kind of gut reaction to smelling something and thinking, ooh, okay, that, that smells a little bit questionable. I'm really not sure about that. At the end of the day, don't eat something that you're not comfortable with. 
That is not the takeaway here. I am not advocating for food poisoning or forcing you to eat something when you just feel completely wrong about it. That is definitely not what I'm trying to say. But the myth that I really do want to dispel is the idea that after X amount of days, you should just throw something away without inspecting it, without taking a look at it, seeing if it really has gone bad or not. Rather than giving you some random rules, I want to empower you to make those decisions for yourself. I think it's so important to think about what you're throwing away and why you're throwing it away. And in the process, you might find that you actually throw away less food, which is really great too, not just for the environment, but also for your wallets. So that wraps it up for today. Thanks so much for watching. Please help support my channel by giving this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the little bell icon down below to be notified next time I post. If there is any other fruit or vegetable that you're struggling to figure out whether or not it's still good or whether you can still eat it, leave me a comment down below. You can send me photos or videos also on Instagram at Clockwork Kitchen. I'd be happy to help you out. And I'll see you next time on Clockwork Kitchen. Happy cooking.